Hello, everybody, and welcome to Work Against the Grain. My name is Jeff. Been a while since I was able to post a video, but uh, I'll spare you the details. Rest assured, everybody is back to being healthy and strong, and the uh, family's doing great, so I appreciate you hanging in there. I want to jump in and show you something that we kind of put together in Aspire, and from my perspective, it's really neat. It took me a little bit of an adjustment to, to get it to go, but I think it's going to be something that you can use in a lot of your 3D carvings. Many of us at times have wanted to uh, somehow incorporate different species of wood into different parts of the sign or different parts of the model so that uh, we could get some contrast. Sometimes when you do a 3D piece all in the same species of wood, it's not the greatest looking thing. So anyway... I wanted to see about how we could take one of our models, an already produced baked model that perhaps you bought from an online seller or uh, a model that uh, you had somebody create for you, and do some inlay stuff so that we could get some different types of material when we went to machine it. So let's hop in and have a look. Okay, so I have this Lindsay crest that was created. And as you can see, it's completely baked. The model's completely baked together. Certainly, this is something that when the model is produced and you've got the different components, you can absolutely create your the shapes and the different inlays and things that you want to make yourself as you're building the model. But this particular case, the model's all baked. We've got this really nice bitmap here of this really nice model. And there's the 3D look of it. So now I thought, you know, wouldn't it be neat if like the bird and the crown was a lighter wood and then everything else was a darker wood? How would that look? And we're going to know at the end of this, as I'm doing this video it's it's literally machining as I'm talking to you now so how can I do that so what I did was I came up here to edit trace the bitmap I want to do it in black and white and again as you raise and lower your slider is what we can get some vectors with right so kinda of came in here like this and said you know that that no I don't like that that's kind of okay. What about like right there, right? Uh, maybe I want, see this little piece of brown right here? This, I, I want that color. This, I want that color. The rest can be white. I'm cool with that. But I want some contrast in there. And again, this was just something I was trying. I said, okay, that doesn't look too bad. And then maybe your corner fits. Uh... Put this down uh, probably 40%, 41%. Noise filter will go three pixels, four pixels. Bitmap fading, I like it nice and dark. That has to do with the lightness and darkness there. Then I went preview, and I said, okay, yeah. You know, that looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, let's try that. And then I went apply. And then close. And so now you go back to your model and you turned off or, or you turn off your your model here. And now you've got all of these vectors, right? Well, I don't need any of these. So I'm not doing anything with those. So highlight those and delete them. And then let's see what we pick up here. No, nope, that's too much because see, it got some of my bird. I don't want to do that. What's that one? No, nope, that got that part of my bird. I don't want to do that. How about that? Yeah, I can get rid of that. Let's delete that. How about this one? No, nope, that's got part of the bird. How about these letters here? Let's look at these. Yep, we can get rid of these. Let's get rid of all of the... Ve and you could, if you wanted to inlay these letters in, in different species of wood, you could do that too. So I just kind of went in here and I took a look at the vectors that uh, that I didn't need because they're not going to be part of what we're trying to do. 
my end result is I just want this bird right here to kind of be a different color. Not kind of be a different color. I want it to be a different color, right? So uh, come in here like this. Select these. Get these out of here. Okay, right? This one probably don't need. All right, now where are we at now? Okay, so this is all one vector here, right? And I know I want to get rid of all of this. I don't need any of that. So what I, I want to do is I want to cut this vector right here. Let me zoom in a little bit. I want to cut this right here. I want to cut this right here. So I'm going to push the letter N as in Nancy on my keyboard, go into node editing, and I'm going to just cut that vector right there. Then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to cut that one. And then I'm going to hit N on the keyboard again. And now see, that takes all of that. Now my bird's left alone. I hit the delete key, and all of that is gone. Okay? But I somehow I got to join this neck up. I got to get this joined up here. Right? Let's go ahead. What about here? What's, what's this one look like? Let's hit our node editing N. And let's go ahead, and we'll cut that vector. We'll come up here and cut this vector. Sometimes you got to do it a couple of times. That looks pretty good. And on the keyboard again. Yeah, that looks good. Hit that. None of my bird. Hit the delete key. All right. How about here? Node editing. Well, here I know I want all of that. Cut the vector there. And I want this, but I don't need that. And cut the vector there. And then N again on the keyboard. And now I can delete all of that. Okay, and so I'm thinking, you know, if I can get this, kind of this shape cut out here, uh, I would be happy with that. Now, if you turn your component back on, you can see that these kind of end right here and then go into, see how they come into the, the darker wood here, okay? And then you got a little trailing one right here. So what I did here was, we'll turn that back off. I got to connect these somehow because I need to cut this out. And so I went to my drawing tools and I went to the draw curve. And I just kind of said, okay, Let's let's just come around here like this. Cuz most of that is out of our model anyway. I like to go a little bit past so that we can we can trim those up. Hit your escape key, hops you out of it. Then you come to your scissors, zoom in here, let's cut that one and let's cut that one. Okay, so I got all that closed up. Now I want to come in here and I'm doing it fast for the video. Certainly, you, you want to take some time and, you know, really put some detail and thought. And you'll see again when it's all completed. Here, I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to go from this point right here, and I'm going to take it to that point right there. And then I'm going to hit the exit key. That puts a vector there. And then I can also hold down Shift and this vector and I can right-click the mouse, join vectors by moving the endpoints. And then I can hit Shift again. Let's do this first. Let's come in here, and we're going to cut that guy out of there. All right, let's go ahead and finish closing this out. So if I come back to my model, and you can leave the model on, too, while you're, while you're trying to do this. Drawing. I'm going to come here, drawing curves again. I just want to come up here like this, like this, like this. And I think what I'll do is I'll take it to here. And escape. Okay, and then that puts that vector there. We've got that there, that there, 
But let's go ahead and right click and join those vectors. Moving our endpoints. Zoom in here. Yeah, see, I don't like that at all. And so what we'll have to do is come in here and just put us a line like that. Escape key gets us out of there. And then I should be able to take my scissor key and cut that away, cut that away, and cut that away. Okay. And all you're trying to do is enclose that in right all the way around. And this, you'll see this later. This has nothing to do with the the model itself, right? Because when we do a profile cutout, it's going to come down there and cut all this out, okay? And then I don't think I left this one, this vector right here. I don't think I left that uh, as brown. Okay, so now let's turn our model off, and there we go. So now... What I need to do is, the first thing that I want to do is I've got my, my full piece here. I've got my model where I want it in my uh, piece of material. And so I need to cut a pocket now here. And so let's be sure all of these are selected and connected. They are not... Actually, let's go ahead and we're going to, yeah, we're going to delete this one. Okay. Connected. Let's shift, click, right click, join vectors by moving the endpoints. And now I've got one solid vector there. And I've got a vector there. Okay, so now that we've got our vector, we want to select the vector, right? And we need to pocket this now. And so I'm going to come over here to my inlay toolpath. I want to do the female pocket here. Select pocket. Now here you can do a couple of things. You could take it all with one tool or you could use a larger area clearance tool. I'm just going to go ahead and use an end mill I'm going to go 0.5 inches deep, end mill, four passes, offset, and the inlay, calculate. And then when I preview that tool path, now I've got a pocket cut out in that 3D model. Okay? Then what I did was, without touching the model at all, I took this vector right here. And I right click copy, file, new. Go ahead and save your changes here. Yes. And we'll, we'll look at it's uh, 24 by 24 here. We need a half of an inch thick of material. Okay. And then I went paste. And so now I've got my second piece of wood on here and here I'm just going to run a simple profile tool path on this vector profile we we'll use a quarter inch bit we'll go point five zero five so we'll get through it go into the spoil board five thousandths of an inch we'll go outside I don't need tabs because of the vacuum table you may want to add some tabs if you do you do it here and we're going to call this male inlay and calculate. And it's telling us it's going to go all the way through. That's fine. And let's preview that tool path. Boom. Okay. So now we're going to take this piece here, right? And now we're back here to our original. So now I have a pocket. that that other piece is going to push into. So before I've done any machining here now, I have a, a pocket here. And this is kind of neat. See how it's got the, this will be 
this the other color of wood and this will be the other color of the wood and so you'll press the piece into here um, and then you just machine the model like you would any other model but now you've got a different color or contrasting wood that's inlaid into this wood first before you do the model machining. And I know this was long. I hope this makes sense. I'll show you some pictures at the end here of how the uh, finished product turned out. I really appreciate everybody hanging in there with me in the time that I've been away from doing any videos. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Any questions at all, post them down below. This is Work Against the Grain, and my name is Jeff. Good to be back. Okay, here we are with the finished product. You can see there what it looks like with the maple inlaid into the walnut. You see up there in the upper right of the piece, that was that area that I just, we drew that kind of circle, and I had mentioned it was going to get machined away. This is, uh, isn't is the actual file that I did the tutorial with. You can see where I, I cut out by the swan's neck so that some brown would show through there, give it a little bit more detail. Down at the bottom of the crown, there's some. Still got a little bit of sanding to do, but I was really pleased with how this machined. You can see how the brown edges of the walnut come up and meet the white edges of the maple. Really, really pleased with how this came out. And this is from just making a rough outline of the maple doing an inlay toolpath, both male and female, inlaying the maple first into the walnut, and then you run your roughing and finishing toolpaths. And I'm sorry I don't have the machining uh, portion of the video. My uh, camera apparently in the shop didn't do the right thing, so I don't have that for you. I apologize, but we'll do some more of this in the future. So. Anyway, I hope this is something you can incorporate into some of your projects. I sure had a lot of fun doing it. I really thank you very much for tuning in and, and hanging in there with me. I'll get some more videos up as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching. This is Work Against the Grain, and my name is Jeff.